Hi guys, Barn Reaver Spurred On, and it's another Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. And of course, this time, Five Things We Learned from Tottenham Hotspur 1, Sunderland nil in the 4.30 kickoff yesterday. I was at the lane, it was a tense match, it was, it felt a bit uptight, but important to remember, after European games, a lot of teams slip up, and we didn't, and that's the vital thing. Three points is always good in the Premier League. But let's get started. First thing I want to talk about, it's got to be because Deli Ali has just signed a six-year deal, uh, which is fantastic work from the club. Absolutely brilliant from Deli. He's, uh, he's given some great quotes today talking about what an amazing club he is and how proud he is to sign for so long. For me, uh, it's all positives. The only slight thing that makes me wonder is, are the vultures starting to circle? Are people, I mean like big clubs, big foreign clubs, your Barca's, your Real Madrid's, your Bayern Munich's, are they starting to ask about the availability of Deli Alley for the next one, two or three years or whatever, which for me means that is why Daniel Levy has said we want to sign you long, we want to give you big money, I would suggest between 50 and 60,000 a week at the age of 20 is a huge amount of money, but he's definitely done the right thing uh, because it means any time over the next three years if a big club wants to come in for Delhi, then they will have to make an extortionate offer. Daniel Levy does things right, he's got this one right again, well done. It brings me on to Delhi's performance yesterday. Again, much of a muchness in terms of how he's played this season, I think. Um, not hit his straps yet, not hit his full stride, and uh, yet we're still picking up the results, and he's still getting himself into great positions. And of course, last week at Stoke, he got his goal as well. So, you know, six or seven out of 10 for Delhi, doing the business, but as with the rest of the team, not quite at full level yet and I think that shows what a great start we've had because even though we're not playing to the level that we did at the back end of last season, uh, second half of last season certainly, we're still picking up those results and uh, just four points off the top of the league at this stage uh, doing re really well in third place. Second thing I want to talk about, the man of the match himself, Hung Min Son, Sonny, I thought it was his best game in a Spurs shirt by miles yesterday. I said it in the match review yesterday, talked about it during the fan cams, check them out if you haven't already. I'd never seen him uh, go down the line and get his left foot crosses in yesterday and it really surprised me. But three or four fantastic deliveries in from the byline. And I think it adds something to Spurs if we've got someone in those three behind the front man who can actually reach the byline. Because Lamella, whichever side Lamella plays, he always cuts in. He has no interest in getting to the byline and putting a cross in. He always wants to come more central. So if we have a player like Sonny playing more regularly who can go either inside or to the byline, it makes it so much harder to defend against. And I thought he was fantastic yesterday. Hit the post as well, was giving and going really nicely. You know, made the keeper make a few saves, hit the side netting, easily his best performance. And Richard Bochettino came out afterwards and said that after the Olympics, Sonny had asked if he could go back to the Germany. I know, uh, go back to Germany. I know that the Olympics had really upset him. He wanted South Korea to win that gold medal, at least to get to the final. When he came back, he was distraught. And I think maybe at that point he felt a little homesick uh, for Germany, having played there for so long and asked if he could go back, and maybe it nearly happened, but I, for one, am pleased that he didn't, because yesterday he showed exactly what he's got. He's not just a fantastic um, personality around the group, which he, you know, he does bring that. He's obviously a, a bundle of energy, but also on the pitch, he gives us something different, and I'm pleased that he stayed. And I think, you know, and I'll go on to this a bit more later, I think potentially he is pushing for a first team start more regularly now. I think Christian Eriksen's got to look over his shoulder a bit, and I think Eric Lamella does as well, although he looked good when he came on just shows a bit more that we have a bit more depth there uh, and I'm excited to see how Sonny can go on. Be interesting to see if he'll uh, play against Gillingham on Wednesday. Third thing I want to talk about, Harry Kane. Now obviously he uh, scored his second in two games in the Premier League, uh, the winner, but still lots of Spurs fans talking about Harry Kane should be rested, Harry Kane should be dropped to prove that nobody is a guaranteed starter, Vincent Janssen should be given a chance. Well now that, I think, is going to be taken away from us. Uh, at this stage, it's about half past 12. Uh, we haven't heard the full extent of Harry Kane's injury. It doesn't look great. I would suspect we would be very lucky to get away with an, a, a layoff of less than a month. So Harry Kane is going to be out of the team. And I think, guys, we've got to be careful what we, what we wish for. Harry Kane had started the last 70 Premier League games for Tottenham Hotspur. He scored about 50 goals in that time, and yet, just because he looks a bit tired sometimes or he's not scoring as many goals as he does when he's on an absolute firestorm of a run, 
people are asking for him to be dropped. You've got to take into account what he does off the ball, what he does bringing other people into play, and still getting in the positions to score a goal. It's not just about you know, what you do when the ball gets to your feet. You've got to be in that right position to score those goals. And Harry Kane's positional awareness is fantastic. His decision making is brilliant, I think. For someone of his age as well, we're talking only 23 years old, he's so far ahead of where most 23-year-old strikers are at that point in their lives. Um, I think we've just got to give him a bit of a break, guys. And I don't mean rest him and whatever. We will miss him if he's out for a long time. We will seriously miss him. And that's not to say I don't rate Janssen. I think he looks good. But we would really miss Harry Kane. So let's hope and pray that it's not a long injury because it's good to have those options of Janssen as well. But let's not put the pressure on him all so early. Harry, I really hope this isn't a bad injury for you. It looked bad on the replay, though. Uh, fourth thing I want to talk about, Musa Sissoko made his home debut yesterday. I would say six, maximum seven out of ten. He tried hard, he worked. He just looked a little bit like maybe he was trying a bit too much at times. Um, he did put in a great cross that made Jordan Pickford work in the second half, and he had a good snapshot across Pickford in the first half down to his right-hand corner, just went wide. But, you know, it'll take time, let's be realistic. Uh, he's not used to the style of play that we do. He's not used... Like the other players all are, they know where they should be in various situations. They know what their teammates are going to do. And of course, Musa doesn't quite have that in his uh, repertoire yet because he just hasn't played with them that much. However, he is obviously strong, he is quick, and he has got ability. And when him and Dyer and Dembele all on the pitch together, and Wanyama, of course, you know, it's a frightening prospect. Uh, I want to say I thought Wanyama played excellently as well, by the way. Um, so a good signing I would say let's give him time to get into the system and to know how to play Pochettino's way but I think it will prove to be a great signing for the squad as a whole for the rest of the season finally and I alluded to it in a couple of these points I want to talk about the squad depth yesterday was a perfect example of how we have improved from last season last season in a match like that if he wanted to rotate the squad after Europe we're bringing in Tommy Carroll we're bringing in um, you know your Harry Winkses players like that. Now, I think they're good players, good pros to have, and Harry Winks, I think, will become an excellent player. Um, and also, obviously, we're bringing in the likes of Chadley. Uh, but this season, we are stronger strength and depth-wise than I think we have ever been. And also, I just want to say other ex-Spurs players who've gone off to other clubs because they couldn't get regular first-team action, your Chadleys, your Sigurdsons, your Townsends, uh, fantastic to see them scoring. I really do think it is, because these are great players but who just couldn't quite oust regularly the team or the players in the team that have done so well for Spurs over the last couple of years. Uh, and Etienne Capu even as well, doing brilliantly for Watford, four goals. Uh, and I think it just shows that Pochettino, who has had all those players in his mitts during that time, he improves players and we get good sell-on fees for them if they're just not willing to put in the hard yards to try and break into that first team. And I'm pleased that they're all doing well. I'm pretty pleased that our squad depth now is better than ever. And I'm really, really ecstatic at the start we've had. Three wins, three clean sheets, two draws. The two draws we got at home to Liverpool, who are fantastic this season, especially against the clubs who want to keep the ball and go at them, like we had to do at White Hart Lane. And Everton away on the opening day. A lot of people complaining about that. But I think a lot of, a lot of teams would have gone to Goodison on that opening day and lost. And we did well to get a draw there. So I think a fantastic start. Middlesbrough away next after the Gillingham League Cup game. Let's go up to the Riverside, get three points. And then after that, Manchester City at home. And they could well, by that point, have won six out of six. And could we be the one to stop Pep Guardiola's juggernaut from rolling on? Guys, let us know what you thought of this video in the comments box below. Don't forget to drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred On TV. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barbie for Spurred On outside the lane. We finally, well, I say finally, we'd just beaten Sunderland 1-0, but it felt like it was finally because half-time it was 0-0. We were absolutely bombarding their goal. 